common saying among trophy hunters is, a plat is a plat. But is that really true? Hi, I'm Score, and here's how I see it. What's your take on the topic? Is a plat a plat? Please let me know in the comments. Part 1. How I became a trophy hunter. Do you remember your first trophy? I don't. According to PSN profiles, it is Good Eats from the game Infamous on PS3. But I remember my first Platinum, Telltale The Walking Dead Season 1. This game was an emotional journey and to this day is one of my favorite games ever. I noticed a weird trophy. It wasn't bronze, silver or gold. It was bluish. I'm not a completionist, so 100% a game didn't do anything for me. That was in 2012. However, three years later, in 2015, I played Until Dawn, a choice-based horror story that changes with the player's decisions. After my first playthrough, I was curious about what I had missed. Two days later, the Platinum Trophy popped and I was satisfied. I had seen everything the game had to offer. And so, I looked through my collection of games and earned more trophies, the ones that I could earn with little to no effort. I enjoyed myself playing finished or abandoned games because it satisfied my curiosity. It showed me things I wouldn't have seen otherwise. The games I played ranged in difficulty from 1 to 4 out of 10. Because of trophy hunting, I discovered gems. In 2018, everything changed. Part 2. This changed everything. I am an average gamer with no particular skills. Fast-paced shooters weren't appealing to me because I was dead before I even saw the enemy. Platformers were too frustrating and story-driven games were the best games I could think of. Three years after the start of my journey, a question started to emerge from the depth of my mind. Am I able to beat Uncharted 1 on crushing difficulty? I had never played a game on the highest difficulty before. True frustrating, no fun at all. But what if? And so I decided to try. And I struggled. But with the help of videos made by LudiXP, thanks Lucy, I survived the infamous Blue Room and the rest of the game. And I was high from that success. I wanted more. I searched for easy platinums and I found Rhyme. It looked beautiful and didn't seem like a challenge. One day later, the platinum was mine. That was the first time I played a game for an easy platinum. The satisfaction wasn't there. It is worth noting that this happened after a big and draining trophy challenge. I'll come back to that later. The next and easy platinum was Stormboy at the end of 2018. Stormboy's platinum can be earned in 15 minutes. It looked cute. And I chose this game because I had not earned a platinum in 3 months. Another weak moment. I convinced myself to play any game because I am open minded. And the easy platinum was just a nice side effect. More short games followed at irregular intervals, but in between there were great games with cool platinums. I hit my lowest point after I earned my platinum 40. The Long Dark. This game is fantastic and I've been following the development since its kickstarter in 2013. To celebrate my love for the game, I decided to earn a platinum. It was a long journey, but on the 14th of November 2019, the Platinum popped. I wrote the high that the Platinum gave me, and my brain wanted more. And so, I found Slide. The Platinum popped in less than a minute, and a week later, Midnight Deluxe and the mother of all grubby Platinums, My Name is Mayo, were added to my collection. These were more examples of being vulnerable after a hard, challenging Platinum. Easy Platinums promise a quick solution for a bigger problem. Back then I wasn't aware of it, but now I am. I must not forget that this isn't about big numbers. It's about memorable experiences. And to this day, I regret playing Slide and the other Easy Grubs. But I swore myself to never buy a, that kind of game again. Part 3. The Dark Side of Trophy Hunting After that low, I focused more on prestigious games and I earned some of my favorite Platinums. The Last of Us Remastered, Heavy Rain, Demon's Souls Peace 3. But I could not stop playing easy games in between. Games I only played because of an easy platinum and a quick dopamine fix for my brain. I want to clarify something. My trophy collection is by far not the worst trophy collection. My list isn't filled with shovelware and stacked games. And to some it seems like I totally exaggerate. 
but that is how I feel about my collection. This moment is to reflect my trophy hunting journey. After all those years, my innocence was gone. I wanted something better. <sighs> and so, for the first time on my trophy hunting journey, I set a big goal. I knew it was too ambitious, but I was curious about how far I could push myself. Trophy hunting had awoken some sort of ambition. That must have been the time where I discovered r slash trophies and peace and profiles. And to my surprise, I reached new heights. I didn't reach my goal of 50 platinums in a year, but for the first time I earned 36 platinums in one year. That's 3 platinums a month on average. I paid attention to my completion rate and within 2-3 to three years I raised it by 20% to 60%. Since then I haven't made much progress. Games with a ton of DLC prevent my progress. Overall I was obsessed with that. But I wasn't honest about it to myself. And that was the problem. I wanted to impress myself. Part 4. The consequences of my actions. In hindsight I've done some stupid crap to earn trophies. I lied to myself to convince myself to play a game with an easy platinum. The reasons were plentiful. It looks so different from everything else I have played. It has a pretty platinum icon. It would beautify my collection of platinum trophy icons. The atmosphere fits perfectly for this time of the year. It has an easy platinum, but it is no grubby. This game brings me closer to my next milestone. I also convinced myself to finish games with the ridiculous trophy requirements. I love open world games and that trumps the ridiculous hours I have to invest to earn the platinum. My biggest skill is surviving mindless grinds and collecting 600 plus collectibles. I can't ignore my biggest strength, otherwise I'm an unskilled trophy hunter that is doomed to play easy games for the rest of his life. Let me play before work to get some hours of grind in just to earn a stupid trophy. That was a new low point. Thanks Dying Light 2 and GTA 5. Other behaviors I have integrated over the years. I definitely don't play video games without checking a trophy guide for requirements. And I'm not even a completionist. I ignored how tired I was just to earn trophies between 4 to 6 am to prove myself how hardcore I was as a trophy hunter. The stats page was a driving factor behind it. Back then I didn't recognize my behavior as a form of addiction, because in my mind an addict is someone who uses every day and has lost control over his life. I still functioned more or less normally. I didn't even play every day, but when I played, I played excessively. There were times when I felt bad, very bad at times, but who is strong enough to label themselves as an addict, especially when a lot of positive feelings emerge from that behavior. I didn't know the term functioning addict. In times I don't play video games, I'm increasingly thinking of my next game, my next platinum, and I crave the feeling of playing a game. I'm thinking of earning trophies to feel better, to release some tension from my body. I want to lose myself in a big world and forget about the stress of real life, but I also want to live healthy and not be led by addictive behavior. So, part 5. A plot is a plot. No, a plot isn't a plot. Not in my book. No, not anymore. There are big differences between platinum trophies. There are platinums that hold dear memories, platinums I worked hard for, platinums that taught me something and platinums that challenged me in a good way, platinums that surprised me positively, platinum trophy lists that are well crafted and a lot of fun. And then there are platinum trophies that increase my stats, trophy lists that require stupid things designed by people who want to please corporate suits with high stats. I've stopped lying to myself about this. The lie, a plot is a plot, has brought more harm than good into my life. And I had to make many mistakes to be finally able to realize that. This is my way to create some healthy distance between me and my favorite hobby. You do you, but don't expect me to join you. Part 6. What now? First of all, <sighs> I feel better now. Videos like this get a little dark and very personal sometimes. But don't worry, I'm fine. I want to face my current situation. These videos help me to work through some of the things that happened in the past. I already stopped worrying about my completion rate. I'm very curious about how this turns out in 2024. So far, I feel much better. And I don't have to have a solution for my situation yet. But I can say, I'm on my way. Small steps in the right direction are the best way to move forward. 
At the moment, I feel nothing but gratitude for everything I experienced in 2023. Last year was an amazing year. I met people from the community, I learned many things about myself, and I pushed my limits and got rewarded big time. I read every single comment from you guys, so thank you for sharing your thoughts and feelings in the comments. What's your take on the topic? Is a plat a plat? Please let me know in the comments. 2024 will be a year of healthy trophy hunting for me, and I invite you and everyone that wants to join. Thanks for being here. I wish you a happy healthy year of trophy hunting in 2024. Here's a video about the platinums I earned in 2023. Do I recommend them?